Hello, my name is Adrian with Applied CX, and in this FEMAP and NX NASTRAN 5 minute tutorial, we're going to be talking about beam modeling. A quick outline of what we're going to discuss the overall modeling workflow, element cross section and orientation, mesh sizing, how many elements do you really need, merging nodes, and finally a bit of post processing. So, for this tutorial, I'm starting out with a FEMAP model that just has curves and we're going to mesh these curves with beam elements. I like to start in the model info tree, starting at the top and working my way down. So first we're going to create a new material, and I'll just load steel from the library. Then we'll create a new property. We're going to want to make sure that our element property type is set to beam. We can give it a title, select our material, and then we need to select our property shape. For this one, I'm going to select a circular tube, punch in the radius and the thickness, and I'll hit draw section. It's important to note that the Y direction and the Z direction define the orientation of our beam. The X direction is down the axis. All right, next I want to set my mesh sizing by mesh control size along curve. I'll select all of these curves, and you can either select a number of elements or an element size. Now I'm going to do something like four inches for my element size. I don't need high mesh density to get accurate results with beam elements. The reason I'm using this is you can see in the preview here, this will give me enough elements that will get good resolution on my deformed shapes. Next, I actually mesh the curves. Mesh geometry curve. Now, if I do select all, try and mesh all these at once, select my property, everything's fine up until we have to choose our orientation vector. Now if I were to choose something like the global Y direction, it just has to not be collinear with the curve. So I'll click OK, and you can see that it's meshed everything except these six curves here, because they are collinear with the Y direction. So I'm going to say undo, and I'm going to do it in two steps. I'll say mesh geometry curve. I'll select all, but I'm going to exclude these curves here. All right, for this, I'm going to use the global Y. No errors. And then I'm going to do the same command, come back and grab these, and for this one I'll use the global x direction, and they happily meshed. Since I meshed all this in two operations, I'm going to need to check my coincident nodes, tools, check, coincident nodes, I'll select all, and when you hit preview, it'll show you where there's coincident nodes. So those need to be merged. There we go, 12 nodes merged. All right, I can add some boundary conditions and analyze at this point. I have a finished model here. You can see I put a load, some constraints, and I have results. So let's go into post-processing real quick. We can deform. And the special thing about beam elements is you want to use a beam diagram. Here I'm showing the max combined stress. It's a little bit different than plate or solid elements while you use a contour. All right, for more information, please check out our website. We've got tutorials, downloads, our technical online seminars are a bit more involved than these uh, quick walkthroughs, and you can get a bit more in-depth information there. Uh, thank you for your time, and please feel free to contact us with any more questions.